Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. First things first. Next week's video will be the monthly Q and A. If you have any questions about martial art, Xiu Dao, and Qigong practice, please post them in the comment section or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. My email address is in the description. Just so you know, if a question deserves detailed discussion beyond the scope of a Q&A, I will only provide a brief answer in the Q&A video and elaborate on it in a dedicated video in the future. Today, we will decode three martial proverbs. First, Quan Li Ru Feng Yu Ru Lei. Second, Zi Shi He Jin Li Zhi Zheng. Third, Yao Ru Zhou Li Shou Si Lun Xing. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jing's commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's sentence is Qu Shen Qu She Qu Tai, a key concept from Chapter 29 of Dao De Jing. In this chapter, Lao Zi gave a further explanation of the meaning of Wu Wei or non-action. According to him, Wu Wei is nothing but following the natural way without resorting to extreme measures to deal with the social and political challenges of his time. At the beginning of this chapter, Lao Zi used two sentences to express his opinion about the political and public administration by saying, quote, Jiang Yu Qi Tian Xia Er Wei Zhi, Wu Jian Qi Bu De Yi. End quote. Translation He who wants to win the people's hearts by force, I know he can never be successful. End translation. Then he gave the reason by saying, quote, Tian Xia Shen Qi, Bu Ke Wei Ye, Bu Ke Zhi Ye, Wei Zhe, Bai Zhi, Zhi Zhe, Shi Zhi. End quote. Translation The kingdom is a spirit like thing and cannot be achieved by forced action. He who would so win it would destroy it. He who would hold it in his grasp would lose it. End translation. Here, the kingdom means people's support. Then Lao Zi answered how one should act by re-emphasizing the concept of Wu Wei by saying, quote, Shi Yi Sheng Ren Wu Wei, Gu Wu Bai, Gu Wu Shi, end quote. Translation, since the sage follows the non-action principle, he would not fail and lose, end translation. Then, Lao Zi gave a further explanation of this claim by saying, translated code, Sometimes one is strong and sometimes weak, sometimes healthy and sometimes sick, sometimes is first and at other times behind, and translated code. Simply put, things are different. Then, at the end of the chapter, Lao Zi concluded this chapter by saying one sentence about where today's term Qu She, Qu Yuan, Qu Tai comes from. He said, quote, Shi Yi Sheng Ren Qu Shen Qu She Qu Tai, end quote. Translation, so that the sage puts away with extremity extravagance and excess. End translation. Here, qi means to avoid and put away. Shen means extremity. She means extravagance and tai means excess. So, another way to express the importance of wu wei or non-action. In Xiu Dao practice, the term wu wei expresses the importance of attitude in dealing with energy refinement. Please keep in mind that 
the overall approach in Xiu Dao is Wu Wei O non-forced action. However, Yu Wei O with action is the necessary approach in certain steps. Daoist practice takes Wu Wei as a general principle but utilizes Yu Wei in working on some specific practices. For example, Wu Huo or martial fire is used in gathering the mental power at the beginning step in order to strengthen the fire used to refine the energy, which is considered Yu Wei O with action. Regardless, Yu Wei in Xiu Dao practice is still not a forced method but instead just adds more strength for specific practice purposes. Therefore, understanding and determining when the Yu Wei method should be used is the critical step in Xiu Dao as well. In dealing with postnatal energy, Yu Wei is the proper method to start with. Furthermore, Taoist practice focuses on prenatal energy, which requires adopting a Wu Wei approach to work on prenatal energy. This is the key difference between the right times to apply different types of mental focuses in dealing with Yang energy's rising experience. Even though it requires a stronger level of mental work when utilizing Wu Huo or martial fire, the concept introduced by Lao Zi in this chapter, Qi Shen, Qi She, Qi Tai, or avoid extremity, extravagance, and excess, must still be applied in Xiu Dao. So, Following the natural way of managing non-action and with action in energy refinement but focusing on non-action is the right method to refine energy, which is the takeaway from this chapter in guiding Xiu Dao. With that, let's now decode three martial proverbs. The first proverb is Quan Li Ru Feng Yu Ru Lei. This is the famous Tai Chi proverb created by Chen Xin, the most important Tai Chi scholar in history, and the author of the famous Chen Style Tai Chi book, Chen Chi Tai Chi Quan Tu Shuo, or Chen Style Tai Chi Administration. Before explaining this proverb, let me ask you a question. Is Tai Chi practice very soft and quiet? Well, it depends. When Tai Chi is practiced in a slow and relaxed manner, it looks soft and quiet. However, when Tai Chi is practiced with power and speed, then it is not that soft and quiet anymore. Now, let me explain this proverb word by word. The proverb Quan Li Ru Feng Yu Ru Lei consists of seven words. Let's break it down and translate it word by word. Quan means martial, Li means power, force, Ru means like, Feng means wind, Yu means also. Lei means thunder. Put together, it means Tai Chi martial power is like wind and thunder. Chen Xin used this proverb to express the effect of a Tai Chi martial power execution, O Fa Jin. There are three keywords in this proverb. The first keyword is Li, which means power or force. There are differences between the word force and the power. In Tai Chi practice, especially in a martial application, power is the more proper translation. The second keyword is the wind, which indicates speed. In Chinese culture, 
the word wind has two opposite connotations. One is the soft wind, which means gentle. Normally, we add another word in front of it, such as spring, so Chun Feng or spring wind means a soft, gentle. But normally, wind means high speed or fast. Here, the intended meaning is the second one, indicating that Tai Chi power release should be fast. Then, the third keyword is the Lei O Thunder. It is used to express that the movement should be powerful, since Lei in the Chinese language commonly means a strong power. So, together, this proverb is used to describe that in Tai Chi Fa Jin or power releasing action, the effect should be fast and powerful not soft and quiet as often seen in Tai Chi practice aiming only for health. Now, let's discuss a step further by comparing Chen style Tai Chi and other styles of Tai Chi practice. Very often, people are under the impression that Chen style Tai Chi practice requires powerful and fast power releasing movements. Well, other Tai Chi practices are very soft and quiet. Actually, this is not true at all. Let me explain. There are three steps of a Tai Chi training no matter which style. The first step is the form practice. The second step is the push and practice and the third step is the free application practice. Each step has its own training purposes and should be practiced accordingly. For example, the first step of training is to get familiar with the movements, body structure, and intended martial application. According to the traditional standard, this is the step at which we get to know ourselves in terms of body, power, intent. And so on. The second step is to know the Tai Chi energy of the other person through Tai Chi push and practice. This step is the key step since it is the step helping us to be able to apply some Tai Chi skills gained in the form of a training with a training partner. Sometimes, a Tai Chi practitioner may try to apply some martial intents of a Tai Chi movement on the training partner in the push and practice, which can be similar to a Tai Chi application instead of a pure Tai Chi push and practice. Traditionally, there are differences between Tai Chi push and and free application and both of them should not be confused. A traditional Tai Chi push and should not involve Tai Chi free application techniques directly. For example, you are not allowed to punch or push someone's chest directly. You even cannot use the locking technique according to the old standard. The third step is to practice the freestyle Tai Chi application. It is a step that focuses on both Tai Chi energy and the Tai Chi martial techniques contained in both the form and the push and the training. So, that step is different from the push and step since it allows direct striking and executing a strong and fast Tai Chi power. So, even though skills gained in Tai Chi push and practice, the preceding practice of this step can be applied here. The free application step should not be confused with the push and step. So, you can use Tai Chi push and skills in free applications, but not the other way around. 
Now let's continue talking about a common mistake in Tai Chi Pushan practice. Very often, Tai Chi practitioners, especially those without a strong Tai Chi martial training background, add a lot of free application techniques into Pushan practice and vice versa. As a result, the untrained audience has no idea what they are actually doing. Even worse, it may give people the impression that Tai Chi application is just like that, a practice without necessary martial speed and power, which according to the traditional standard, is a mistake. So, we should be able to clearly differentiate and separate the Tai Chi Puchan from Tai Chi application practices in order to avoid this type of confusion. In prior Q&A videos, I have talked about this issue. Of course, some styles of Tai Chi utilize Peng Force or Word of based Tai Chi energy while Chen Cell utilizes the Silk Reeling based Tai Chi energy. However, in terms of speed and martial energy, all Tai Chi should be the same in freestyle application practice, which requires different type of Tai Chi energies and related martial power execution. Also, as mentioned in prior Q&A videos with regards to training method. Many of the Tai Chi Fa Jin practices are still considered a quote-unquote secret, usually practiced behind closed doors. So, please do not get confused when seeing someone demonstrating some Tai Chi soft power in a so-called Tai Chi application. In reality, it is just the push and style of application. To summarize, this proverb clearly explains the necessary elements of a Tai Chi martial Fa Jin or Tai Chi power releasing practice, speed and powerful martial impact, the wind and the thunder. So, remember this Tai Chi proverb, Quan Li Ru Feng Yu Ru Lei, or Martial power is like wind and thunder. Now, let's move on to the next one. The second proverb is Zi Shi He Jin Li Zheng. This used to be a popular proverb in Tianjin, but it's not so popular nowadays. So, let's change that today. This proverb is very simple in meaning, yet, it's very deep conceptually. First, let me translate this proverb word by word. This proverb has six words in two short phrases. The first two words are zi shi, which means posture, wherein zi means structure and shi means tendency. He means coordinated. So, the first phrase means the posture should be coordinated which means that in martial art practice, the different body parts holding a static posture should coordinate. Then, the second phrase also has three words. The first two words are Jin Li, commonly translated to force and power. Zheng means united, unified. The meaning of the second phrase is that, in a dynamic state, martial power generated by different body parts should be unified as one. Now, let me explain it further. The first part, zi shi he, or posture should be coordinated, is used to describe that different body parts should coordinate with each other in a static state. In martial stance practice, for example, the Santi stance of Xing Yi, 
different parts such as hands, feet, hips, head, and so on should coordinate. The key question here is, what does the word coordinate mean? Since different body parts are not intended to have the same function in a stance practice. For example, in Santi posture, the lower hand should maintain a slightly downward pushing energy, while the upper hand should maintain a slightly forward pushing energy, and the head should maintain a slightly upward extending energy. Even though these energies are intended to move in different directions, they should maintain a balanced state in which all of them act simultaneously. By doing so, a static posture will have a dynamic feeling and tendency, which is a necessary practice in many Xing Yi stances. So, the first phrase describes stance training but uses a dynamic method in dealing with a static practice. The second phrase is the Jin Li Zheng or force and power generated by different body parts should be unified as one. This means that in power execution practice, the moment when you release your martial power, body parts should intensify first before releasing martial power. Furthermore, very often, martial power should be able at its maximum when striking the opponent's body parts. There are two steps involved in this process. First, body parts intensifying and two, power releasing process. To be a qualified internal style martial artist, th these two steps should be executed without an extended energy accumulation time. In other words, martial energy should be executed without preparation since the preparation time is so short, it's as if it takes no time at all. So, if you see a potential movement to accumulate energy before a fast energy releasing movement, be aware that the potential movement is just that, a potential movement and nothing more. This second part actually talks about the body structure requirement in executing a fajin movement. It is a dynamic concept applied through a static approach, a movement when body parts intensify and unify as one, imitating a static state before martial energy execution, the opposite approach compared to the first phrase of this proverb. By the way, recently, some people who cannot execute Xing Yi Fa Jin have been trying to deny the necessity and the value of a Xing Yi Fa Jin training, which is incorrect but not a so common mistake since in the Xing Yi community, experienced practitioners know that you have to practice Fa Jin or your Xing Yi training is just incomplete. This topic has been discussed to death already and, to be honest, isn't worth any more of our time. To summarize this proverb, we have to know that this two-phrase proverb emphasizes two different aspects of a martial practice, the static and the dynamic approach. In other words, in stand training, a dynamic approach should be added to a static practice, while in a martial power releasing movement, a static approach should be added to a dynamic practice. This kind of a practice exactly reflects the yin yang concept that one part will transform into its opposite under certain conditions 
which is the philosophical foundation of ancient Chinese philosophy. Again, if you have a hard time mastering Xing Yi Fa Jin practice, please focus on the fundamentals and keep working on the basic practices. With time, your practice especially your body structure will become more appropriate for the real Xing Yi and the martial power execution of Fa Jin without any unnecessary movements will definitely improve. Now, let's move on to the next proverb. The, the final proverb for today is Yao Ru Zhou Li Shou Si Lun Xing this is the Bagua proverb. So far, the earliest known source of this proverb is Jiang Rongqiao's Bagua book. There have been over a million copies of this book published since the 1960s. At the beginning of this book, there is the Bagua training poem with a total of 17 sentences. Each sentence being a pair of phrases. So, in total, there are 34 phrases. Today's Bagua proverb, Yao Ru Zhou Li Shou Si Lun Xing, is just one of the 17 sentences. Many of these sentences can be considered Bagua training proverbs. Jiang Rongqiao was my grandfather's Kung Fu brother since they both practiced under Zhang Zhaodong, one of the most Xing Yi and Bagua masters in Tianjin less than a century ago. Zhang Zhaodong also created the Xing Yi Bagua Palm, of which Jiang Rongqiao's Bagua is the simplified version. Now, let me translate this proverb word by word. There are two phrases in this proverb. The first phrase is Yao Ru Zhou Li. Yao means waste, Ru means alike, Zhou means axis, like a wheel revolving around its axis. Li means standing. Put it together, Yao Ru Zhou Li means that in Bagua practice, the waist turns around just like an axis. In other words, Bagua martial power in the body is mainly generated by the turning motion of the waist or the lower dantian area. So, the lower dantian's turning is the body mechanism of power generation. In other words, focusing on the lower dantian's rotation is the key aspect of Bagua practice. The second phrase also has a four words. Shou means hands, Si means like, Lun means will, Xing means moving, turning. Put together, this phrase means the hand move like a wheel. Now, let me explain. There are two meanings to this sentence. The first one is that hands make a circular movement since Bagua arms very often follow this type of a pattern. The second meaning is that the hand and the arm move like a wheel since the waist moves like an axis. So, in order to understand these two phrases proverb correctly, the two phrases have to be interpreted together as one, or else if you only read the second phrase in isolation, without referring to the first phrase, you may only grasp the first meaning, which is rather superficial compared to the second comprehensive meaning. Again, one is planning any martial proverb, context and background is very important, or else misperceptions will very likely occur. Now, let's talk about this proverb a bit further. This proverb clearly indicates the importance of the waist turning. Very often, we see many practitioners only 
focus on the foot stepping method during Bagua circle walking. All their turning is done through the Kou Bu and the Bai Bu or inward stepping and outward stepping, which is not wrong. However, the body mechanism is very often wrong in terms of the relationship between foot stepping and waist turning. So, body turning should be the priority compared to the circular walking. In other words, if the body turning is not enough to make the expected Bagua circular turning, then the stepping method will most often be the solution after the body turning. To summarize, the body turning method is the most important practical aspect, and the arm and hand movements follow the body motion instead of the other way around. This is the general principle of Bagua training in terms of dealing with the martial power generation mechanism of the arm and hand, a key aspect in Bagua practice. To wrap things up, today's video introduced three proverbs, one each about Tai Chi, Xing Yi, and Bagua. Even though each proverb was introduced in the context of the specific internal style, it can be applied to other internal styles as well. For example, the first proverb is mainly intended for Tai Chi practice, but can still be applied in Xing Yi and Bagua practice. Likewise, for the other two proverbs, of course, these three proverbs are general principles, which is why they can be applied by almost all three internal styles with or without any modification. Also, from the introduction of uh, these three proverbs, you can see how important it is to know the linguistics historical, cultural, and martial background in order to explain a simple proverb correctly, or else you will not only be wasting your own time but more importantly, you will also be misled in the wrong direction. So, I hope you will pay special attention when reading a proverb, especially to its explanation. I hope these three proverbs will deepen your understanding of internal style practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. A quick reminder to send me your questions for the monthly Q&A next week. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.